continuing on with domain 5.6, let's go over some user guidance and training. First thing we're going to talk about is policy and handbooks. So these are documents and resources that outline the organization's security policies and procedures. We need to make sure that they're accessible. So whether that's posting this on a content management database, something like SharePoint or maybe like a Confluence, right? A knowledge management based system that all employees have access to. Regular updates. We have to make sure that we have some system in place that says, hey, we're going to review this maybe quarterly, maybe biannually, and make sure that we have updated this with the current standards. And then acknowledgement. Employees should have, we should have some sort of system in place that we can verify that employees actually read it. Some sort of acknowledgement in place, right? Whether that be maybe a quiz on like your internal LMS system or something like that. Situational awareness. So the ability of employees to recognize potential security threats in their immediate environment. So physical security, making sure that they're aware of who's around them, what are they doing, kind of like, uh, you know, tailgating, preventing things like that, where you don't open the door or hold the door open for somebody following you into a secure area that you got to badge into. Digital vigilance, recognizing potential digital threats like phishing or social engineering attempts. We have to make sure that we provide the necessary training to give them that awareness. And then also as a SOC team or IT team, do we have the proper things in place for them to even report accurately? Inside a threat. So the potential for individuals within the organization to cause harm intentionally or accidentally. A lot of times we hear insider threat, you know, we got our eyes on the scope. That person's malicious. Sometimes an insider threat, and this is something we have to be wary of and be just as cautious of, is somebody that just isn't trained properly. That's exposing information and they don't even know they're doing it. So for the malicious, behavior monitoring. Watching for changes in behavior that might indicate malicious intent. Now, as the SOC team, can you do this? Are you going to have cameras and everyone doing some creepy AI stuff that we've seen going around? Hopefully not. Hopefully you're not an organization wants to implement that. This is a team effort, right? Having stakeholder involvement and having employees recognize maybe some weird behaviors that get reported. Now, this is kind of tricky because you don't want, you know, a culture where we don't trust anyone we work with. But if you kind of take the approach of a cybersecurity zero trust architecture, that's kind of how it is, right? When it comes to digital stuff, our digital protection. Access control. One way to prevent malicious or non-malicious insider threats is just ensuring the uh, least privilege, right? Ensuring you have good access control. RBAC, mandatory, rule-based, discretionary, all the different access control methods. And then, of course, there's regular training. We need to educate our employees on the signs of insider threats and then also the proper way to report them. Password management. So these are practices and policies aimed at ensuring the creation and maintenance of strong, secure passwords. If that's going to be a way that we authenticate in an organization, if we're still using passwords, we didn't, you know, we're not doing password list authentication. We need to make sure there's good management of it. So regular changes, avoiding reuse, complexity requirements, maybe making our passwords a hard key, right? Removable media and cables. So these are policies and practices related to the use of external devices that be can, can be connected to organization systems. So maybe we don't want our users plugging in USBs because that's a great way to get a malicious payload on your system. So maybe we have to give prior approval to them using a mobile device or a USB or plugging in things to the computer. Maybe we have DLP or HBSS systems that are getting alerts when someone plugs something in. And then, of course, just keeping track of physical devices to prevent loss or theft. If you have a mobile device fleet, make sure that we still have accountability over it. That could be quarterly or monthly check-ins, right, with the user to ensure they still have that device. Social engineering. So these are manipulative tactics used by attackers to trick individuals into revealing confidential information. We need to train our workforce on how to recognize this, right? We can do simulated attacks. We can conduct mock social engineering. We want to establish clear procedures. Say, hey, employee or workforce, this is how you report what you believe may be a social engineering attempt on you to get to the business, right? Operational security. So these are practices and policies aimed at protecting sensitive information about the organization's operations. So this is making sure we have good mandatory access, right? 
We're limiting access to information only to individuals who require it. Least privilege, access control methods, ensuring we have good data classification, and ensuring we have secure communications for that sensitive information. Now, obviously, in the government, this is pretty black and white. We have, you know, secret and top secret information systems. The private sector, this is something we're going to have to establish. What is private? What is sensitive? What is confidential? And how do we implement the proper protections and access control and need to know within our organization? Hybrid or remote and slash remote work environments. So the new enterprise isn't always at the office now, right? As cybersecurity professionals, we have to be aware of our remote workforce and the attack vectors that come because of it. We want to make sure we have good secure connections using VPNs or maybe SASEs, right? Kind of that uh, SDN cloud environment to connect our remote workforce. Good physical security. So guidelines for securing physical workspaces and devices in remote locations. This could be telling a user, hey, if we're letting you work remote, maybe don't go to Starbucks to work on R&D projects. And then telling our users of good awareness of surroundings, being mindful of who might overhear or see sensitive information in public spaces. If we're protecting IP and you let remote workers in your the city that, you know, maybe you're in the, the Bay Area, you go to the local coffee shop, there could be another developer from our competitors in there. I know it seems very niche, but it's just something we want our users to be aware of and make sure they're practicing good protection of our organization's data. Now let's go over reporting and monitoring. So initial. These are going to be the immediate steps taken when a security incident is identified or suspected, kind of getting into our uh, incident response, so immediate notification. So prompting them, uh, promptly informing the relevant security personnel, doing their initial assessment, and then the contain it, containment measures. Recurring. So these are the ongoing efforts to observe and maintain organizational security postures. So this is, you know, we're talking at a high level. We're not going to get into like, uh, you know, a SIM and how we can use AI and machine learning and SOAR to do automated remediation. This is just saying at a high level, you got to be aware that in your organization, you need recurring, continuous monitoring, regular reporting, and to build trend analysis. Development. So this is the process of creating and enhancing security awareness programs. So when we want to, when we want to implement a security awareness program, the development phase we have a couple key things. We need to do assessment, identifying the specific security education needs of the organization. And this could be looking at your industry, your workforce, um, what compliance you may have, and kind of then branching out from there. Material creation. How do we develop the training resources? Do we bring in a third party? Do we adopt an LMS system to build our own training? Or do we bring in a third party to do it for us? And then program review. Is our program working and how are we evaluating that it's working, right? A lot of times this is through gamification where we do these phishing campaigns or we do exercises on our employees. We'd be like, okay, we uh, developed an awareness training program. Here's what we developed to test it. And then, of course, execution. So this is the implementation of the security awareness strategies. So how are we rolling this out? Ensuring a systematic deployment of training and awareness initiatives, right? So this is us saying, we're going to do this quarterly. We're going to make sure that each department does it, or we could be more strategic. This quarter, marketing needs to be compliant. Next quarter, accounting needs to be compliant because maybe we have a really in-depth training program that takes away from their day-to-day, -day, right? We want to make sure we have good employee engagement and we foster that culture, right? We want to also make sure we keep a tight feedback loop. We want feedback from our staff members about the training. And then also performance metrics. How do we measure the effectiveness? Again, we, a lot of times that's through gamification. Okay, now let's do our check on learning. Question one, why is it essential for organizations to provide users with policy handbooks and regular training? So that's going to be D, to ensure employees are informed about the organization's policies, procedures, and expected behaviors, promoting a secure and compliant work environment. Question two, what is the importance of fostering situational awareness regarding insider threats in an organization? So that is going to be A, to ensure that employees are aware of the signs of potential insider threats and understand how to report suspicious behavior. 
Question three, why is password management an essential topic in security awareness training? So that is going to be B, to ensure that employees understand the importance of using strong, unique passwords and the best practices for creating and managing them securely. Question four, what is a critical security awareness practice for employees working in hybrid slash remote environments? So that's going to be C, implementing and adhering to secure practices such as using VPNs, securing home networks, and following organizational policies while working remotely. Then the last question, question five, why is it important to include reporting and monitoring procedures and security awareness training? So that is going to be C, to ensure employees know how and when to report security incidences or suspicious activities, facilitating rapid response and mitigation. Awesome. So we scored 100%, guys. That's actually be the last video in our Security Plus self-paced course. Stay tuned for our conclusion video. And if you're interested, we have a bunch of bonus content on our paid course. Click that link below to enroll and to see how you can be, get access to our full learning management system.